The final thing we have to do if we want to take this movement to the next level is always remember to put those we serve at the center. To never forget the phrase, nothing about us without us, young men. To ensure the voice of our young men guides every plan we make and every step we take. That's why we will end where we began MBK Rising, listening to the wisdom and lived experience of our boys and young men of color. So please join me in welcoming four of our young leaders in conversation with the star of Netflix's Queer Eye and father of two incredible young men of color, Karamo Brown. Give it up for these young men. Hey, Bill. How's everybody doing today? Good, good, good. How y'all doing? What's up? Listen, um, this part of this part of the program is very important for me. But I want because this is who we're here for, all of you. These young men have done amazing work over the past three days, and we're here to hear what they've been through, what they've experienced, and what they've taken away, and what they need, which I think is most important. But before we start, earlier today we've heard a lot of people talking about loving each other out loud, being with each other, supporting each other, which is what this weekend's about. And I want to start this off with clear intention of us getting up. So rise to your feet. You guys too. I want you to turn to the person next to you on each side and say, I love you. I love, I you, love you. I love you. I love you, bro. Love you too, bro. Love you, bro. My boy. Love you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Love you, man. I love you too. Yo, my kings. I love you. I love you. Now that, now that is what this is about. We're going to love each other out loud, continuously. Now I know most people say, um, especially for anyone who's a little bit younger or anybody who's in a corporate situation, having your phone out is always like the worst thing ever. They try to take your phone constantly. I don't come from that school. Have your phone out, like everything we do. So my notes are on here that I'll be asking. So the first question I want to ask you all, and this is for all of you, this has been an impactful couple of days. My Brother's Keeper was started by President Barack Obama for you all, to show the world that you all matter, to let the world know that we love you, mm -hmm. that you are loved, that you are appreciated. And I want to know what has been the most impactful thing for each of you that you have taken away thus far from this weekend? Uh. All right, well, I'll start again. Lee Kwan Muhammad, everybody, SJLI. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I would say is the most impactful thing for me uh, from this whole weekend, uh, I heard a brother say it the other day, you got to remain consistently consistent and persistently persistent. Mm. And um, it stuck out to me because um, a lot of endeavor, especially with this work, you're going to come towards a lot of endeavors, but you got to remain, you got to always keep that focus like on a goal. And when those endeavors do come, you got to figure out ways to get around them or hurdle them or, or try to keep fighting through them because it's always going to be problems. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. exceptional. What about you? Uh, well, I had the chance to ask President Obama a question, and I think not just his knowledge, but the generational knowledge we're getting from all the speakers, all the brothers, and you know the you know the then knowledge we're getting across the state borders, meeting the different brothers from Chicago, New York, Milwaukee, uh, New Hampshire, <laughs> everywhere else. Like I love y'all and all the knowledge you've been giving me. I appreciate it. Before before we move on, is there something specific that you learned this weekend that you really stuck out in your mind that you'd want to pass on? Yeah. Uh, so there was a, this session today. I, I can't tell you who exactly because policies, but uh, there was this brother that was talking about the metric of love. And I, like, we talk about retention rates, we talk about uh, how many uh, kids we impact, but you know, 
How are you making that brother feel in your space? Are you making him feel loved? Are you making him welcome? How are you, as an organization, as a person, as a mentor, helping a brother out? And I think that's the most important metric. Mm, good job. Uh, can I introduce myself? Yeah, of course, introduce. How Mataki Api, Chante, Washte, Nape, Chiyujapelo, Kendrick Igo, Imachi Api, Tashighag Nupa, Imachi Api, Nia Wagagapi, Omataha, Bismarck Elwati. Hello, my name is Kendrick Igo. I'm from the Standing Rock Nation. Uh, I welcome you with a heartfelt handshake. Uh, and, uh, I've learned for the past two days that I have power to give power mm. to the young people so they can continue the work that needs to be done in our communities. And also I've learned to, uh, a lot about each one of you that I've met throughout these past couple days. I learned a lot from you guys so I can take that back to my communities as well. Mm, good job. Kwame Trice, uh, Philadelphia educator, um, also here representing Following Greatness Mentorship Program. However, one of the main things that I learned, uh, or I would say the most memorable uh, thing that I took away from this whole entire week was Mayor Baraka, he said, mm. if you don't have a seat at the table, stop looking to, you know, for somebody to bring a seat for you, create a table and create right. that table right. for people to come and join your table, right? I thought that was like the most powerful thing that I wanted to take back with me back to Philly. Yeah all exceptional things that you all have expressed that you've heard and that you've taken in that I think it bears needing to be repeated because those lessons that you've learned is what you'll be using as you interact with people not only here but as you go back to your communities. Right. One of the things that I was most impressed by with this weekend was the diversity in the group of young men here. Young men of color come in so many different identities with so many different intersections. Mm -hmm. You know they are of a certain color, but they also are a certain religion, a certain gender identity, a certain sexuality. And I loved how everyone has been embracing each other and connecting. Mm -hmm. For each of you, I wanna know, how were you able to connect with someone who is different from you? And how will you be able to do that when you go back to your communities? Because as we know, as men of color, it's sometimes hard. Mm -hmm. You sort of like get with your clique and that's who you talk to. And that person over there is different, so I'm not gonna talk to them. Right. But you've modeled the behavior here, so how will you do it there in a way that people out here listening can continue that as well? Mm. Um, I would say, uh, like, just meeting the brothers and um, having friendships in all walks of life. Um, a lot of the times, maybe it's a lot of liquor stores in my community, but in my boy Kwamir's community, uh, we need to work on schools, we need to work on education. And my boy um, Kendrick, Kendrick uh, is, is he working on the uh, reservation. So you take these different ideas back to my community and you, we all could like network. Uh, so we could all FaceTime or something and we could work on these plans together. We could work on these solutions to these problems that we have in our own mm -hmm. perspective community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, really quick introductions. Uh, my name is Alejandro Galicia Cervantes. I'm here representing the Sacramento Collaborative uh, with, the, with the Center at Sierra Health Foundation. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. And you know, the way I connected to a brother was um, there's this brother from Houston. Uh, we, we looked different, uh, different complexions. And you know, we just sat down and we started talking about like where we come from, what city we're from. And like I told him, I'm from SAC, he's from Houston. And then we just started connecting and we, we started to see that the same things we're struggling in Sacramento, they're struggling in Houston. Mm -hmm. The same struggle, is, is doesn't matter from what city you're from, we're experiencing the same struggle. And from there, we just build a brotherhood. Yeah. <clears throat> Amazing. Um, give it up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I connect, how I connected with somebody, my, the very first person, um, that from here, uh, that was coming to the same conference was Emmanuel. He's from Louisiana. He's right over there. Yeah. Hey. Uh, it was funny because he had his laptop out and he had like some, you know, I'm a really geek into Dragon Ball Z, so he had he, he had Capsule Corp on his laptop. I was like, man, like, nice laptop. And we just hit it off from there talking about Dragon Ball Z. 
Then I heard he was going to MBK, and then, then we just started hitting it off after that, and we were staying at the same hotel. It was just like, oh my God. That's, you know, so, and, uh, f and from here on out, we'll always be brothers, man. Good job. Yeah. 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 So I actually have a question. Like, my, I'm wondering what it's going to be like when I go back to Philly, because we don't really have an MBK in mm. Philly where I feel like there's something like this, like where we can come together, obviously not on like a larger scale like this, but um, I believe, you know, you have so many different programs that, you know, MBK, I'm sorry, so many different cities that MBK is in and Philly don't actually have that. So I want to, I really am trying to figure out like if we can create something where this is happening on the regular, right? Where we constantly have fellowship and we constantly have people uplifting each other, obviously brothers, who come together and collaborate and, and, and can really lean on each other. Yeah. Well, I think what's special about your question is that the answer is sitting right here. Right. You all answered it in your original statement of creating the table for people right. to do, of connecting on similar interests, on understanding that we are all going through the same struggles and making sure that we network. That is the brilliance that you have seen right here. The solution of sustaining what has been created here with my brother's um, keeper, you all are doing, and you have the tools already within you. Mm -hmm. And I think what's so impactful about you all being up here is showing that sometimes, even as you've gone through this spectacular time, you've interacted, it's still hard to think, how does this continue on once we leave here? Right. How do I do this work? How do we keep doing it? But through your mouths, and through your own words, we've heard exactly how it can be done. So I just want to give you all props again for being the architects of creating something that's going to go beyond this weekend. So just give it up for them one more time. Now, there have been many adults on stage um, from our, the first, our you know, president, 44th President Barack Obama, to many other special and amazing people who have said to the youth, this is what you need to do. This is what you need. Mm -hmm. I want to hear from you all and tell me, what do you all still need? Mm -hmm. um, well, I was talking to a couple of brothers yesterday at the uh, youth, youth, youth track, and um, it just was so many ideas that we had. And you know, uh, some people were talking about giving more platforms for people who are doing this type of work, so that way they can get the exposure that they need to get the resources that they need for their communities. Mm -hmm. You need more mental health programs, more restorative justice programs, after school programs, different things that, you know, that can engage the young minds. Even trauma centers, because a lot of the times we go, into, we go into school and we go through our lives with things that we carry in on our back that we necessarily can't tell somebody, but if we're set down and somebody engages with us like you did, we can kind of come out that shell, give that vulnerability. So that's what I believe we need. Good job, yeah. Um, you know, every time I get asked this question, I always think back of the, I was at this retreat or a little summit with uh, the Campaign for Black Male Achievement in Oakland, and a brother, there was a student panel and a brother went up and he said, you know, I'm privileged because I only went through homelessness. I'm privileged because I've only gone through hunger. And when he, when he himself got asked, what do you need from us to help you? And that brother just straight up said, uh, I just need you to be there for me. And I think that that says it all. Like, like maybe we do need programming. We need this wraparound approach for youth, but we just need adults to be there in our lives. Because I personally, I, I didn't have any goals in mind on, up until like junior or sophomore year. Mm -hmm. But there was one person that asked me, what do you want to do? And for the entire of my life, that was the first time anybody has ever asked me that. Mm. And I think all we need is for adults to be there for us. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> uh, for, for speaking for indigenous people, what I think we need is always a seat at the table. So, so you know, speaking on that, this is exactly what we need right here, you know, a space and a platform, the connections we make, you know, so, so we can get, give back to our indigenous communities and so we can also take our knowledge to give to you guys. I, I don't know how many people I met today that didn't know 
I didn't ever met a Native, a Native American before. So the knowledge that we have for you guys is, is, is great. So, um, and also on top of that, just to kind of talk on some reservations as well to just kind of give, you know, the knowledge and talk about that we are still here and this is what we need as a platform. And this, we're doing it right now. Great this job, yes. One of, the, one of the things that um, I, I had an opportunity to discuss uh, with, with a couple of my brothers that were here was um, invested mentors. And we were talking about like kind of what that looks like um, because a lot of the mentors that we, we all had um, that I, who, were, who I was talking to, they were saying like sometimes the mentors, you know, would give them the contact information, uh, they'll tell them to hit them up, uh, they'll be like real, I, I guess like transparent in that sense, like, yo, I wanna, I wanna help you. But when they reached out, it wasn't reciprocated. It wasn't like they had the real passion to do the work. And I'm not necessarily sure what, it, what may have been the issue, but I, I can only imagine, man, as an educator and a mentor, um, it's, it's tough, right? Like you kind of can easily get burnt out. And we were talking about some solutions around that. And we were like, man, why isn't mentorship like a full-time job, almost like an educator? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if like our mindset has gone there yet because a lot of people think about the previous uh, mentors that they have in like, you know, past time in history, how people just did it, right? They didn't ask for any money. They didn't ask for any like credit, credit or anything like that. But it's really tough on people when you ask people to take on a load of, of, of young people's problems or, you know, things that's really uh, necessary for them to focus on in a sense. Like, kids want to pick up the phone and, and express to them, like, what they want to do, but are you able to answer that phone call at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, right? And, and not focus on, you know, what, what's next for you in your life, especially being a young mentor, right? I just think those types of uh, ideas and, and solutions are, are things that I, I would hope we start thinking about. So I'm hearing a very common theme throughout all of you of mentors and mental health. I like that has been something that each of you have in this moment said, well, I need to talk about, well, can you ask me a question of what do I need? Can you support me when I give you that answer and show up and say, I need you now? Right. Um, and are there those resources available? How do you feel that or what does this, the space look like for you where that mentor is always there and they're supporting your mental health? What does that space look like? Is it something where there, you need an hour a day, two hours a day? What do you feel as if you need? Because I think having a clear framework of what you need mm -hmm. will give people a better understanding of what the work they need to start doing. Oh, man. We need like 24 hours, of, you know. <laughs> classrooms, like, um, shout out to SJLI again, my boys Marcus from Watts, mm -hmm. my boy Sean. We went to a class together called the BMYA. And um, I've always been an a individual who looked at people. Can you a, tell before you start, what is BMYA for everyone oh, who doesn't black, know? The Black Male Youth Academy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Black Male Youth Academy. So um, it was, uh, we all like built a brotherhood and, and like I was saying, um, I've always seen people, like I'm an individual who's seen people as a whole from a certain area but that helped me break barriers down. And uh, a lot of the times, like, we have a man-to-man -man conversations, but like these, our women need to be included too because they have good ideas and things that we need to express. They need to express to us because, you know, we need to be better men to our women and women can be way better men, way better women to us. So I feel like we need the classrooms, BMYAs. We need uh, more conferences like this where brothers come from all over the world, all different walks of life, and we all is engaged in our different minds and our different thoughts, and we all can collaborate and create solutions. Not problems, but solutions to these different things that come up. Great job. Mm. You know, uh, there was a speaker that was talking about like, you know, the village is burning down, but I think that's, not the bird, not the fire, but I think that's what we need. We need a village, a whole, a whole community wrap around a youth to prevent him. And in my own life, that's called IYT, Improve Your Tomorrow, back in SAC. It's a whole brotherhood. We meet every Saturday, every Wednesday, every single day of the, of the school year, even in the summer. And 
that's, that's where I found my best friends. That's where I found my community of support. And I think that's what we need. We need to build those villages and our schools and the most at-risk youths. We just need a village. Good job. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as for a uh, person that does go through anxiety that holds a lot on my plate for being there for my brothers, um, I think it is very important for mental health to get, you know, notarized by everybody, you know, and there's, there's uh, a lot that you can do, you know, like just not too long ago, I was freaking out of being up here and speaking in front of you. And he helped me a lot to kind of calm down and, you know, get out here and do this because I have a lot to say to you guys to give you my knowledge. Um, and I'll, I'll go off of what he says, we definitely need a lot and, uh, to build in our community. There's just a lot you can go with mental health. There's a lot you can do. You can do like yoga and all that stuff and like conferences like this to bring different ideas on what you guys are doing in your communities for mental health to give us ideas and we'll share yours and you know, vice versa, just connect with everybody. So that's pretty much what I have to say. Can we, I want to take a moment because I think something you just did was very impactful and then I'll get your answer is that Many times, a lot of us in here have fears, anxiety. We are full of stress. And everyone tells us we still need to be strong, that you must show up. You have to be the best. You, there's no choice for you. Like, President Barack Obama's inviting you. You got to be there. You got to do great. And I think a lot of times, we don't give people the space to say, you can be vulnerable right now. Right. You can say, Enough is enough. Right. You don't get enough time for that. And you just said and admitted something in a very honest and vulnerable and transparent way that many of us are feeling. And I just want to give you a big round of applause for that. And let you know that you are not alone in what you're feeling. Many of us out here are feeling that same pressure, those same fears, mm -hmm. and that it is OK to take care of ourselves. You know, something that we shared backstage, I hope you don't mind me sharing, is self-care is not selfish. And you need to make sure you understand that. <laughs> that as you go through doing the work, and as you find yourself trying, being better, doing what you can, that you also find time to help yourself and take care of yourself. Because you are what's most important no matter what, so never forget that. Did you want to finish off your statement? Absolutely. Um, I just, I kind of just want to add to my point about like what mentorship looks like. Like having a person's phone number is important, right? Mm -hmm. And I think like that conversation that you just had, like to be able to pick up and call somebody is for someone to validate how you feel. Like in a sense, like I understand we all growing up and we all, you know, growing into, you know, being adults, but it's power in having a brother that says, yo, I really understand. Like, I, I, I met Obama too, and when I went back to my community, it was stressful. Like, mm -hmm. people really had, you know, hold you to a different expectation, different standard. And, you know what I mean, when you, when you kind of, did, nothing really changed about you, right? Like, you're still the same person, same human being. So you need people to help navigate and help you understand what that looks like. I actually remember Michael Smith doing that for me um, not too long ago when I got the phone call and he told me that I was gonna come here. He let me know that he had met two presidents and had the opportunity uh, when he was younger to meet with President Bill Clinton. That, and that really stuck out to me because having him like just kind of really relate to me in that way, I was like, man, bro, like I appreciate that because I'm really going through like a lot of stress being an educator, being 24 years old, dealing with 24 kids every single day, like it's stressful. And for you to validate how I feel, saying that you went through the same exact thing, um, once you met President Bill Clinton, that really stood out, man. And, and it made me feel like I wasn't alone. And what I was going through actually, you know what I mean? It, it mattered, like, you know what I mean? Somebody heard me and I can still overcome it with the support of my, my brothers. Yes. Well. You all have had an exceptional weekend, and I'm so honored to hear what you have learned. I'm so honored to learn what you need, and I think that we will all be better because of this experience and what you have shared with us today. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. Thank you. And before we go, I want to leave you all with two things. Remember, the key to success, in my opinion, and I believe this to be true, and success in not only just careers, but in life and happiness and love and every part of who you are, is to just strive to be 1% better than you were yesterday. <clears throat> no more than that. Because I think so often we put this pressure of saying we have to achieve the greatest amount in a short amount of time. But that's not life. Life is your own journey, your own path, and you have an opportunity to run that path at your own pace. Right. And your pace is OK. Mm -hmm. And if no one's told you that, I'm, well, let me be the first. So just be better by 1% each day. Mm -hmm. and secondly, as we get off the stage, I want to end it as we started it. I want you to turn to your neighbor. You don't got to stand this time and say, I see you. I see, I see you. you, bro. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, bro. No, we're all right, bro. Love you, bro. Love you. Love you, bro. Love you, bro. And I'm here for you. All right. And I appreciate you, too. We love you all. Thank, Thank you so much. You.